Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I as always am Riz Grestar and this is another reaction to a death battle, Ant-Man vs. Adam. As always, the link to the original is in the description below. So this is the start of Death Battle Season 10, and yes, we have Ant-Man from Marvel vs. Adam from DC. So starting the season off with a Marvel vs. DC, which I know that everyone seems to love. Um, so I only really know about Ant-Man through the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, you know, I really don't know anything about him as far as the comics are concerned, and so like some things that I know about him. He can grow. He can shrink. He can only do such with his suit. Like, he as a person standalone can't do that. He can go... I mean, I haven't seen too much... Like, yeah, very tall building size, right? Or, like, subatomic particle. You know? So, very, very, very small. Um, I don't know if he can actually grow bigger than what we've seen in the movie. Like, I assume he can in the comics. Like, I, I imagine so. Um, but just from what I've seen in the movies, he favors going smaller in general, you know? I'm just laying out that brief groundwork to show, like, what I've seen. Like, what vague stuff I am vaguely familiar with. Um, just because, like, I'm sure that the comics are going to have a lot of different stuff to them. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what that's about, and as for Adam, I really have no idea. Like, based upon his name and, you know, of course the matchup, I assume that he has a very similar sort of power, um, as far as being able to change his, um, his mass, I guess? But, yeah, who knows? I mean, I say mass, I'm not even sure how that all works, because, like, when he's tiny, he's giving people, like, big boy punches, like, normal sized or like strength punches, right? But like if he actually were still that strong, then like wouldn't he also be incredibly heavy, like incredibly dense because of all the mass like condensed into that tiny little human body space that he becomes? And like if that's the case, how is he riding on the backs of ants? I don't know. Like I know that they like the movies went into all this sciencey stuff about it, but I'm pretty sure that it has to just be defying like so many laws of physics and everything, right? Like it has to be. <laughs> but honestly, I think a big part of this fight is going to be, like, it's going to come down to who can go smaller, you know? And so we have the Atom, who, like, name alone would make me think that he could at least go down to the size of an Atom, and I know that from the movies, you know, Ant-Man could go subatomic. So, if it's just from that, then I would lean toward Ant-Man winning, you know? Um, you know, just because the thing, like, if you go smaller, and then you could go inside someone, and then you go big again, like, they're done, right? They're, that's just it. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, of course, for what Adam can actually do, and to see what Ant-Man is really capable of beyond the very tiny amount that I feel I know. So with that, let's get to watching. So here we go for the death battle, Ant-Man versus Adam, take it away. Ant-Man, Marvel's founding member of the Avengers. The Adam founding DC's member of the Avengers? Mighty Might. Good things come in small packages. Interesting. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> We're just trying to get these out of the way. Yeah, He's okay, that's fair. Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death that's battle. That's right. I'm wondering if there's gonna be like obvious new stuff Did for this season. Did you know that ants can lift 50 times their own body weight? That'd be like if you lifted a car straight over your head. I That'd did. be pretty Thanks sweet. Fun fact of the day calendar. Also, Hawaiian pizza was invented in Canada yesterday. Well, I bet your calendar didn't okay. tell you that Dr. Henry Pym, aka Hank, was considered a genius at a very early age. By three years old, doctors declared that he was smarter than both his parents combined. Oh. He eventually majored in biochemistry Poor parents. and became one of the most successful scientists in his field. I know he made he the Pym particles. He had about shrinking the size of cargo to reduce shipping costs. Ah, logistics. All of which made him a laughing stock in the scientific community and sparked a long-lasting insecurity in the Also, I was stuff. assuming we were going but to be following, like, the same Ant-Man from, from the movies. But this is, like, the, the original, the right? Stuck, right behind Bean and Life. So, naturally, he tested the serum on himself. Naturally. Like any self-respecting scientist would. Of course. And shrank down to the size of an ant. And just when things started going south, a sweet little ant, let's call her Aunt Hathaway, swooped <laughs> in and led Hank safely back to his lab where he could return to full size. Thank you, Aunt Hathaway. Hank harnessed the serum and became the superhero, Ant-Man. Along with his new identity came a fascination in entomology, which hmm. makes total sense. Ants yeah. are fascinating. Did you know that ants can talk to each other in a bunch it's gonna of make me ways? Itchy. Through touch, sound, or even sharing information by barfing at each other. Oh. It's actually called trophallaxis, and they're not barfing per se. It's more like passing food mouth to mouth. Gross! 
Hank figured out how to communicate with his new pets, not by barfing, but by creating a cybernetic helmet that mirrors an ant's antenna. And uh -huh. he's even developed genuine relationships with some ants, like Ulysses as ant here. But he didn't stop there. Hank developed a lot of amazing tech like a stinger pistol that focuses his bio energy into a stun beam and image inducing camouflage to mask himself as an ant. It worked so well it fooled Reed Richards, the smartest guy on the planet. He also built a oh. suit that runs on that nifty Reed thought serum he was an ant, okay. Lab. It lets him shrink thanks to the newly discovered Pym Particles, named after himself. Of course. Ah, classic Hank. <laughs> and the Pym Particle is the key to unlocking the fundamental constants of the quantum mechanics at play here. Okay. They enable you to decrease the distance between atoms. However, in order to do that, he'd have to change the Bohr radius, the ratio of electron mass to the distance the electrons orbit an atom's nucleus. Sure. <laughs> Of course. Like how when you make a bagel pizza, you can't fit the whole pizza on the bagel. Believe me, I've tried. It's too small. You just gotta put less on. Uh, sure, Boomstick. So the pill you, particles Boomstick. are actually displacing mass to an alternate dimension in order to maintain that ratio. Oh, Whoa, it's like having a second bagel to put the rest of your pizza on. <laughs> I get it. But if that were true, he shouldn't be able to punch with full-size strength if he has less mass. And he's definitely lighter, because otherwise he'd crush the sweet antsy ride. Thank you. Like Vincent Van Gogh here. All right. His mass is being replaced I feel validated. with neutrinos, but that doesn't adequately explain how he can have less mass and seemingly more mass at the same time. Sure it does, Wiz. Trust Pim and his particles. Look at the guy. He's explaining like the whole thing in that while outfit. wearing a lab coat. What's more trustworthy than that? You're the exception. You think you understand <laughs> this? Oh, of course. He's small but strong. You said something about a boar, so mm, I guess you wanted ham on that pizza, but I already made the pizza. <laughs> Will you Wrong take board. that coat off? No. <laughs> oh. Regardless, there is virtually no limit to Hank's ability to shrink. He can go beyond subatomic down to the underspace, a plane of existence below all realities in the Marvel Universe. Okay. And Hank has literally changed his biology. He's rewritten his own chemical makeup to prevent anyone else from changing his size. And he's used Pym Particles so much, he's now got an energy field around him that lets him change the size of people or objects on the fly. Oh. Or touch her by straight up firing Pym Particles in the air. Wow. He's never shy about using them either. He eventually supplied his wife, Janet Van Dyne, with some Pym Tech to become the Wasp, his partner in crime fighting. That went well. The two ended up rubbing shoulders with A-listers like Thor, Iron Man, and the Hulk to take down Loki. Ant-Man and the Wasp were actually the ones that captured him and nice. the idea of forming the Avengers. Unfortunately, Hank's insecurities started to creep back in, and he felt that if he wanted to keep up with the big heroes, he was going to have to think bigger. Enter a bunch of those pim powered alter egos like Yellow Jacket and Giant Man, where he can grow oh. anywhere from 12 feet tall to so big he can enter the overspace, the polar opposite of the underspace. I figured, yeah. <laughs> Eternity, who called him Earth Scientist Supreme. Something he won't let you forget. <laughs> Hank pushed himself to these insane heights, even though he knew the strain on his body could be fatal. But he simply didn't care and kept pushing himself. Thus, his greatest and worst creation was born, Ultron. Yep, all the Tin Man Tron was created by Hank, not oh. Tony like the movies. Okay. But the mass murder butt thing turned out pretty much the same. Mm. Big swing and a miss there. Yeah. The fallout from Ultron left Hank in a bad place, to say the least. His guilt made him feel like an utter failure, and that his best work was behind him. This led Hank to do unspeakable things. Uh-oh. A real low life move. No. And even though poor mental health doesn't excuse this behavior, it was clear that Hank needed help. He suffered multiple mental breakdowns, endured the physical toll of the Pym particles, and had bipolar disorder that went undiagnosed for years. So Hank finally did the best thing he could. He acknowledged his problems, got the help he needed, and committed to self improvement. Aww. And with that help, That's Hank good. slowly started making things right. He rebuilt the West Coast Avengers, gave Scott Lang his blessing to become the second Ant-Man, and finally defeated Ultron. He created a backdoor Trojan infiltration code to defeat Ultron that was so advanced it went on to replicate and evolve all on its own to create a new species made up of artificial intelligence. Oh. They don't call him the god of modern AI for nothing. Hank has showed over and over again that he's an integral part of the Marvel Universe. Not just by ways of his scientific contributions or victories in battle, but by proving that heroes come in all shapes and sizes. Of course, right. <laughs> well, that's cool. 
He could go much bigger and much smaller than I thought, etc., etc. Lots of things. He grew up in the Northeast, studied physics at Ivy University, and did everything Mama and Papa Palmer told him to do. Uh, probably. Everything was pretty typical for Ray until one fateful night when he took a walk to take his mind <laughs> off walk the animation. frustrating experiment and saw a meteor fall from the sky. He ran off to the crash and found himself a life-changing piece of a white dwarf star and immediately started messing around with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who wouldn't? He discovered that he could focus ultraviolet rays through it and shrink inanimate objects. Ah. There was just one problem. When he shrunk things, they exploded. Every oh. time. Oh, I do not okay. see the problem. Sounds like he found a <laughs> foolproof way of blowing stuff up. Case closed. Ray was determined to figure out how to shrink objects without blowing them up. But Probably first, for the best. he went on a hike with his nature club. And as a fellow scientist, I have to question his priorities. <laughs> hey, it seems to work for him. I support it. Different hikes for different mics, am I right? While in a cave, the ceiling suddenly collapsed, no. trapping everyone inside. After searching high and low for another exit, Ray found a small opening and had an idea. He could try to shrink himself down and get help, even if it meant he might explode before he got the chance. Why not shrink but the rocks? He didn't explode. I, hope this story I mean, if he's going to risk explosions perplexed, anyway. Ray determined there must have been something special about him that made him uniquely immune to the explosive fate. Something super scientifically convenient that we never get any more information on. Uh -huh. so he got to work and created himself a suit to harness the power of the White Dwarf Star and became the Atom! Interesting. Adam uses the white dwarf fragment to decrease his size while having control over his density, which makes a lot of sense considering that white dwarfs have the mass of a star, like yeah. the sun. But their volume is more like the Earth's, making them among the densest objects in space. Just a teaspoon of the stuff could weigh up to a hundred tons. That's one strong spoon! When yes. Adam <laughs> shrinks and shifts his weight, he's actually sending his extra mass to a dimension called the mass zone. Okay, where, another dimensional uh, thing. Adam could maybe live forever. At one point, Ray's apprentice, Ryan Choi, was murdered by Deathstroke, but willed some of his mass to the mass zone and was able to survive in that dimension. Nice. So these guys can potentially cheat death, but would be stuck there without any outside help. I see. But from yeah. one scientist to another, what's most impressive is Ray's creation of the Bio Belt. That's what allows Adam to use the power of the White Dwarf and shrink while maintaining any weight, from immaterial to his full 180 pounds. Okay. There's even been times where it's stated that he was able to become almost as dense as a White Dwarf star itself for a few seconds. The belt is also how he can travel through phone lines or through the air on currents or light beams. I Over see. Over time, Ray has spread out the White Dwarf power to other parts of his suit, and now the Bio Belt acts as a utility belt for his shrunken weapons and tech. It also prevents his size or mass from being altered by any outside forces. And while okay. he can only increase his size back to his natural six feet in height, his ability to shrink is near limitless. He can travel between subatomic space to the microverse, the foundation of all reality in the DC universe, where atoms become the size of planets. Typically, he can How increase does that back to his to the normal size with such force he can smash through diamonds. So if Adam increases his size too much while still within the microverse, he could blow up the entire fabric of reality from the inside out. I see. Shrinking down to that size means that he can shrink small enough to rearrange atoms themselves. Yep, Ray can take individual molecules and rapidly expand expand them to cook up a small nuclear blast in the palm of his hand. Oh, Ray Palmer. I just got that. <laughs> he also once disarmed a bomb by rearranging its atoms. At that size, he can move at the velocity of light. So fast and so randomly, he basically acted as a barrier between any and all possible atom combinations. Mm -hmm. But come on, there's no scientific explanation here for him to have superhuman senses or awareness to comprehend being everywhere at the same time. Ah, it makes total sense. If you're small enough, you can fit in almost everything, everywhere, all at once. Like how nice you can reference. fit an entire pizza into a calzone, and then you have a whole pizza everywhere inside the calzone. <laughs> Man, I get it. Science is pizza. No, science is all I have. Why are you doing this? <laughs> On top of all of Poor Ray's ways. amazing he tries so hard. abilities, he's also got some more classic weapons, like a laser blaster and a freaking sword he used to fight a giant crocodile. Mm -hmm. Relative to his size. That was when Ray was believed to be dead, but was actually just stuck at six inches tall and stranded in the Amazon rainforest, mm. where he encountered an alien race known as the Catharthans. And get this, he ended up leading a rebellion against their tyrant king and became the ruler of all the Kardashians. And his heroism <laughs> didn't stop there. 
the Atom was a very well-respected hero and was even asked to join the Justice League of America shortly after it was formed. He fought alongside Batman and his best bud, Hawkman. And you don't fight with those guys without picking up a thing or two. Impressive yeah, I, I combat figure. skills aside, Adam's greatest contribution to the legendary team was always his incredible mind. He once created kryptonite inside of Superman by realizing that if he gathered up enough Kryptonian protons, they would eventually become radioactive. While stranded uh -huh. in limbo, Adam realized that if the Flash sped up the rate of a nuclear reaction's stellar evolution to exhaust its core, they could turn a fire demon into a black hole and use it as a wormhole to get back to Earth. He's a brilliant, hard-working, and determined scientist that never stops working on a problem until he's found a solution. I mean, if I figured out how to blow stuff up as well as he did, I would have stopped right there. <laughs> the hero that blows stuff up wouldn't even need to change my name. Ray That's Palmer true. Lived That's the true. Dream, going from research scientist to legendary superhero. He picked up the pieces presented to him and built something greater than the sum of its parts. Who knew this tiny titan with massive brains would have just as much brawn to back it up? Okay. Interesting stuff. Alright, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's, it's time, time for, for a, a death, death battle. battle! Pause. Okay. Just, I'm thinking about it already, you know? So... Let's get some things out of the way, because what I was thinking at the beginning of this, like before watching either of those, you know, analyses, was that whoever could go smaller probably has the advantage, right? Um, and in that case, I'm not sure who can go smaller. If I had to guess who could go smaller, I would still lean toward Ant-Man, because they both have very similar things. They have like the, excuse me, the um, Ant-Man has the Underverse, and Adam had the Microverse, I think? And so they're both like, you know, subatomic, but, um, but like just based upon the way that they worded it, I felt like, um, the underverse was even more underlying, more like the basis fabric of reality kind of thing. Um, but I could very well just have misheard or misunderstood or just be misremembering at this point in time. And so for the purposes of this discussion as you know, like for the prediction, I'm going to say that they can go just as small as each other, right? Cool. So there's that. Um, as far as density is concerned, I think that overall, like, I would say density and, uh, you know, like, alteration and speed, um, that Adam probably has the advantage there, because I don't remember them talking about Ant-Man having, like, super fast speeds, but they did mention that Adam, when, like, at that, like, size, was, you know, had the velocity of light, right? So, that's pretty fast. Um, obviously it's not as, I mean, it's as fast as other people moving the speed of light, but when they're giants or like normal sized humans moving the speed of light, I dare say that that's faster because the distance they would have to cover anyway is like very different. Um, so like this, moving at the speed of light, it's almost like, like when you're that tiny, almost like compensating, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, they did mention that like, you know, when Adam, if he was like in the microverse and then he expanded to his full size, like really rapidly, he could potentially like blow up the whole universe kind of deal. Um, However, like, and normally I'd think that might well be enough to, to finish someone off, but with Ant-Man being able to grow himself big enough to, like, enter the Oververse, right? Because they didn't mention that Adam had a Macroverse. Um, and so Ant-Man, it seems that he alone has that ability to grow even bigger, you know? If he could enter the Oververse, then I think he would be able to survive something like that, strangely enough. Obviously, I, I like, I don't have any real idea, but, um, it seems like that could potentially counter something, because if you're just, if you're that big i mean how it's got to be bigger than the universe itself right that's that was my understanding of it um they both have um actually i don't remember i don't think adam really has a means to like shrink other people aside from like those rays that obviously he was using at the beginning of his experiments but i didn't think they ever mentioned him like building that into his suit where he could then change the the size of other people um like, I think they could both rearrange molecules, so I'll just get that out of the way, too. Like, I know they specifically said it for Adam, but I do not see why Ant-Man would not be able to if they did not mention it. Like, he can go down to, again, like, the same size, if not smaller, I would say. So, I can't see why he wouldn't be able to do that as well. They're both brilliant scientists. Um, Ant-Man had the more prestigious title given to him, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's smarter, so I'm also just kind of rendering that a moot point. Um, like, you know, just saying that they're even in that regard, so I'm, like, not thinking about it much more. So, again, I don't think that Adam can willingly, like, change the size of other people. Whereas, Ant-Man can. Now, they both are able to, like, basically reject that from other people. Um, but, the thing is, Ant-Man can reject 
like that ability from other like make it so other people can't change his size um just by a, like a natural radiation of his body it's just the energy that's emitted from that now it's possible that adam could rearrange his molecules like to change that for him but they also mentioned that ant-man has the capability to rearrange his own structure you know like they can he can alter his own like biochemistry or whatever um so even if like adam could do that like i i feel like ant-man just has enough kind of like resistances to it like he has enough that could just stop it from happening or to fix it if it were to happen kind of deal um so i'm not going to say that that's an adam's favor but yeah again as far as like um so ant-man has it naturally people can't change his size adam had it built into his suit initially just the belt um but then like expanded to more of his suit i don't know if it was the entire suit or whatever but um like there's already a vulnerability there and then they specifically mentioned like you know, people thought that he, um, Adam was dead at one point, but he was actually just trapped at like six inches tall, right? And you saw in the animation, the clip, that it was because like his belt was like broken. It was like sparking or something, right? So that means that it is perfectly possible. Obviously, I don't know how it broke. I don't know what he was going up against, but it's perfectly possible for his suit to malfunction in such a way that it is no longer able to like, you know, shrink him or grow him or protect him, I would assume. Um, Whereas Ant-Man is just kind of all inherent stuff, inherent defenses and abilities. You know, he doesn't even need his suit at this point to shrink. He can just do that willingly and he can shrink others willingly. I assume he can also grow others if he wanted to, etc. Um, so the biggest things that I'm going to give Adam are again, like the, the speed because of the light speed velocity, um, at least when he's tiny. But again, I don't really know what that means when he has to be that tiny in order for it to work. Because again, I don't know how much the compensation would come into play. Um, and then there's the, um, the, the density. <laughs> it's like I had D and I couldn't remember the rest of the word. Uh, the density of it. Because he had the potential for a few seconds to reach like the density of a white dwarf star. Whereas Ant-Man kind of just seemed to have the density of like his normal size when he was tiny. Though I would have to assume that his density would increase as he grows in size. Because if he were a giant, but punching at the size of like a six foot one man, right? That wouldn't do much. <laughs> so I have to assume that his density and strength increases just at, like it does. They acknowledge it doesn't follow science, um, but it's just kind of whatever the comic writers want it to be. Um, and so with Adam having those advantages, and it seems like those advantages alone and Ant-Man having the advantages of being able to, like, better protect himself as far as, like, um, you know, others changing his size or density of, um, you know, like, not ending up in a, a state where he is not able to function as he wants to, um, you know, that, that sort of thing. I feel like Ant-Man can take what Adam can dish out, and I think that Ant-Man is capable of, you know, breaking down Adam's stuff to the point where Adam will lose. Like, I think that it's close in many, many regards. Um, but I think that ultimately, while they both have their own advantages, I think that Ant-Man has the advantage overall. So I'm going to say that Ant-Man is going to win this one and play. You should pick on someone your own size, relatively speaking. <laughs> How did you do this? It's laced with a particle I've never seen before. They're called Pym Particles, and I'm Hank Pym, Scientist Supreme. I wear this under my lab coat. It makes me feel sexy. I mean, like, Adam, you did break into his lab, to be fair. <laughs> Pieces of a white dwarf star? <laughs> That's cute. Everything we needed already existed. We just needed to be smart enough to put the pieces together. Scientist Supreme? How did he put together that he's using pieces of a white dwarf star? <laughs> I do love those moments from the movie with like the train. Did you know that at any given moment, there are about 2.5 million ants under your feet? I mean, that makes sense, but why are you bringing that up right now? I didn't even, I didn't even think for a second about his ability with ants. It did not cross my mind whatsoever. Did 
took me long <laughs> enough. <laughs> Same. Okay, let's try this. You gonna rearrange I'll stuff? Belt. You lay low and let me know what you find. Huh? Yes, Queen. Nice try. <laughs> Just notice. <laughs> Search every electron path in his gun and study their probability wave functions. I just might be able to. Yes? The microverse. Reaching his limit. If we don't get out of here quick, he's gonna destroy all of reality. Uh -oh. Now, my pets, you have your tricks and your tools, but I created something beyond the limits of human existence. I operate on a scale you can't even comprehend. Over space. <sighs> You can't be afraid to think big. Uh. Oh, good lord! <laughs> Why was that the way he had to go? <laughs> I don't like bugs. <laughs> answers to each other's abilities and arsenals. Both were able to store various weapons at a shrunken state. Both were trained in judo, and they both could obviously keep up smarter. with each other's ability to shrink at will. No, okay. there was one small thing Adam couldn't answer to. The ants! Hank's bond with his pets lent him some small advantages, and Ray just didn't have enough anti-ant tools in his bio belt. But in Adam's defense, the fact that he could punch with a fist packed with all of his mass meant that a close-up fight while small would leave Hank with few options since he can only punch with his normal human strength. Even still, all Ant-Man would need to do is keep his dissed ants with the help of his insect confidence and devise another plan of ant tech. Something Ink has no shortage of. For instance, Ant-Man could alter Adam's size thanks to the Pym particle field he generates. Hank would just need to stall long enough to remove or disable Adam's bio belt, and he's yeah. had no trouble hacking enemy tech in the past. I still but don't think he would need the, the ants, honestly. Busted, it wouldn't stop Adam's ability to shrink since the white dwarf power is contained throughout his suit. Destroying the belt only meant that Ant-Man could alter Adam's size. Whereas Hank has literally rewritten his own biology to prevent outside size alteration. And while Adam's abilities are definitely impressive, they are limited. And Ant-Man simply aren't, at least by comparison. Mm -hmm. Hank could always match Ray's size or just take the fight to the overspace where he would have the edge, both physically and mentally. The overspace can mess with the human mind, but we've seen that Hank can handle it. Yeah. But if the Scientist Supreme is really so smart, why didn't he just immediately go up Adam's butt and blow him up from the inside? Uh, what's wrong with you, Wiz? Aren't you a <laughs> fellow man of science? This is the meanest thing you've ever done to me. Aww. Adam sized up Ant-Man, but in the end, he was the one who had to say, Uncle. The winner is Ant-Man. Claps for Ant-Man. Cool. I, I still don't think he would need the ants to, to, to get a victory out of this. Every two weeks this year. And click the join button to get new perks and extra content. Planet cool. level members even see death battles before anyone else. That's so true. Out. Next time on Death Battle. Okay, this is, this is, yeah, Dark Souls vs. Skyrim. Yep, yep. I knew it was coming, I just didn't know when. Like, I didn't know it was gonna be right away. Dark Souls vs. Skyrim, The Chosen Undead vs. Dragonborn. Okay, cool stuff. So, alright, I mean, like, I guess really quickly. Um, so, I've never played Dark Souls. I started to play Dark Souls. I was actually going to have it as a Let's Play, right? But I recorded for like an hour, and I died so many times, and I just got so frustrated that I was like, I don't want to play this anymore. Like, I don't want to play it again, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so I just quit, and I never, I never went back. So... That's, that's me with Dark Souls. I know, like, nothing about it, um, other than it's really hard. Um, Skyrim, I have played. I haven't, I certainly have not done every quest. 
I certainly could not tell you like really what the, what the story is about that much. Like I have actually beaten the game, but usually when I play Skyrim, you know, I just start a new game and whatever I decide I want to do, I end up being like a stealth archer, right? Like everyone does. Um, but it's usually like I start a new game. I, I have a little gimmick for a while and then I'll just stop playing. Like I'll lose interest. Um, and then like a year later, I'll play it again kind of thing. <laughs> But I have actually beaten the game at least a couple times. Um, you know, the, there's a dragon involved and there's some sort of old scroll. I don't know. But yeah, uh, that's, <laughs> I couldn't really tell you much else. So let's talk about this death battle. Let's talk about this death battle. So I was right. Yay, me. And um, yeah, I'm pleased. I'm pleased overall with, with um, you know, what I was able to piece together. Like, I appreciated that, um, you know, in that first screen after, you know, the, the battle ended, um, you know, they mentioned that Ant-Man was smarter because I had that inclination, but, you know, like I mentioned, he has the more prestigious title, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything, so I couldn't say for sure. And I also thought that he could go smaller, which they put, like, arguably go smaller, um, but... Yeah, arguably, I guess. Um, and then I didn't read any of Adam's stuff because they moved on pretty quickly. But <laughs> but I, I saw those two things and you know, made me happy because you know that was part of my prediction. Um, I mean, I, I rendered those both like moot points and like focused on what I thought the actual advantages for each character ended up being once you canceled out the things they had in common. Um, but all in all, like I'm pleased, I'm pleased with what I did. I genuinely, during my prediction, did not even consider the ants. Like they didn't cross my mind. Um, Adam's tool belt did cross my mind, you know? With like pulling out his gadgets and everything, like the sword. I mean, the sword is really the only thing that I specifically remembered, to be fair. I knew he had other stuff, but that was the only like specific item I remembered. Um, but I just didn't think it would really come into play, like be anything super effective. Um, and so I just, I didn't talk about it, but I discounted it in my mind, you know? I really thought it was just going to come down to the other things. Um, I didn't even consider that the overspace would like potentially mess with Adam's mind. Because honestly, I think that if you went to like the microverse, you're probably going to be okay with, you know, the oververse, right? Or the overworld. Overworld? Yeah, I think it was verse in DC and worlds, like underworld and, no, it couldn't be underworld. Underverse, had to be verse. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> underworld would be like a little too hades -y for him. I thought that the animation was fun. It was nothing mind blowing to me, but I thought, you know, that it was, it certainly like served its purpose. Um, I appreciated how they portrayed like the different, um, you know, sizes and everything. And um, they had those funny moments, you know, like they borrowed from the um, Ant-Man movie, like the first one. Like I mentioned the train scene, you know, they had that with the clacky balls kind of deal. Um, or like him almost being stabbed on the desk. It was just, you know, an amusing little touch. Um, my favorite part about the actual fight was um, just the scientific banter that was going back and forth, or not even necessarily banter, but like, okay, if I can just do this and this will happen and then blah, you know, it was just, it was fun to me um, in just like a charming nerdy sort of way, but that was like impressively nerdy, you know, <laughs> instead of annoyingly nerdy to me. Um, so that was cool. Um, and then of course, like the, the analyses I appreciated. Oh, I'm surprised. I didn't notice anything that was different for season 10. And not that there has to be anything different, but I just kind of thought that they had been on a trend of like introducing different things. Whether that's like a new splash, like title screen or, you know, a new character. But like uh, Jocelyn didn't come back at all for this. Dummy wasn't a part of this at all. Um, they didn't have new outfits. I mean, Boomstick was wearing the lab coat thing, but I think that was just thematic, not like a season thing. So. I didn't, I didn't notice anything different, and again, does not have to be anything different. I don't necessarily even want there to be anything different. I like things the way that they are. I was just kind of expecting something to be different. Um, but yeah, I don't think I really have anything else that I want to talk about with this. Like, I feel good about my prediction. Um, I enjoyed the death battle. Um, I think that their, like, conclusion makes sense. Even though I don't think that he would need the ants in order to win, he obviously could use them to his advantage, especially with the way that they laid the ways that they laid out. But I think it would have been cool if they could have talked about how he could have won without them. Um, I mean, maybe he couldn't. Maybe he couldn't, and I'm just wrong. But I feel like he could. And if he could, I feel like that's something that they they should bring up, especially just because um, a lot of people have been watching Death Battle. They you know, there are the rules of death battle as far as like, you know, it has to be who would win the majority of the time because if there's like a home advantage, like obviously that's unfair, etc. Um, and one of the things is like no outside help. It has to be like just that fighter. And sometimes they have broken that rule in the case of like when both combatants have like allies or whatever at their disposal, allies or armies, right? Um, but this was one of those cases where it was one-sided. Like Adam didn't have any friends, you know, that he would call into battle, but Ant-Man did. 
And so you could reason it out as like, well, they're not friends, they're not allies, ants are Ant-Man's tools. But that's just kind of cold, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but he even named them, they're friends! Um, and so, especially just with that in mind, where people could bring up the whole like, oh, but that's not fair because Ant-Man had outside help. Um, I think it would have been nice if they had touched upon that, but I don't think they did. I could have talked over it during the conclusion and just missed it. I do that sometimes, but I just don't remember hearing that. So I, I think it would have been nice to include that, but it's not like a deal breaker that they didn't. So yeah. Anyway, let me know what you all thought about this episode in the comments below, whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, what you thought about this or that, etc. So on and so forth. The next time we will be watching... I don't remember what they're called, but it's Dark Souls versus Skyrim. <laughs> What is it? The Chosen Undead and the Dragonborn? Chosen Undead versus Dragonborn. I'm actually pleased with myself for having remembered that. So with that, we're calling it here. Have a good one, everybody.